leisurely way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Kick back and tune in to the NBA on 2K Sports. Alongside Grant Hill and Clark Kellogg, I'm Brian Anderson. We'll talk to Allie LaForce, who's on the sidelines as well. Now Denver's starting five. Caldwell Pope and Porter Jr. They're the two and the three. Gordon is the four with the Joker in the middle. And it's Murray in at the point guard position. And for the Jazz. Colin Sexton out there with Jordan Clarkson. Then it's Miles Bridges. Then it's Laurie Markkinen. And looking at how these two teams play, it should be a physical one tonight, Grant, particularly on the glass. Yeah, bring your hard hat. This is going to be a physical game indeed. Both sides are used to generating extra possessions with their rebounding. So I'm curious to see which club wins that battle. Now here's Clarkson. He's been contributing over 15 a game. Covered by Jokic. Here's Markkinen. The top of the key jumper is on the mark. You cannot give Markkinen room to shoot from the mid-range. I mean, he's capable of dropping these in bunches. Pass to Caldwell Pope. Porter with it. 27 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. And the shot goes in. Yeah, Jokic likes to keep the defense off balance, guessing as to what he's going to do. He's a threat from everywhere, and his mid-range game helps him put defenses in a pickle. And that one's good, Clarkson. It's never easy trying to keep him off the glass. He's an absolute beast down there. Sexton against Murray. Pass to Jokic. It's good. And the assist goes to Murray. Jokic has gotten his second bucket of the game. Well, you got to do more than that to stop Jokic. I mean, this guy is a master at converting through tough defense. Tie game here in Utah. And quarter number two will get underway just after this short break. as we get back to a game that's been pretty close so far here. And from what we've seen from the Jazz, what's your take so far? Well, a big differentiator was their ability to generate offense by pounding the glass. Oh, there's no doubt about it, guys. Without those second-chance points, this game would have had a much different feel to it. On the court for the Nuggets, we've got Reggie Jackson... Bruce Brown is out there with Aaron Gordon. Then it's Thomas Bryant, and it's Murray in at the two-guard position. Pass to Jackson. And he'll draw the foul. He'll head to the line for two. That's on Colin Sexton. And Grant, a career resurgence for Reggie Jackson. Yeah, B.A., after dealing with injuries, even at one point considering walking away from the game, he's found renewed success, and he's shown he's got plenty left in the tank. And he drops a first. So hits one and misses one at the line. Well, when we talk home court advantage, you think the Nuggets have the best in the NBA? I think so, B.A., and it has to do with geography. Denver is at altitude, and that's hard on your body, trust me, I know. And they're isolated from the rest of the league, so it always is a long trip out there as well. You know, we've seen a number of players make the successful leap from the G League to the NBA, and Fallon Horton Tucker adds to that list. one's off and the Nuggets making a change here green is checked in and 
And he sinks the second. Jackson with it. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Murray passes to Jackson. Now Bryant. Pass to Brown. And he buries his first look. Terrific design and execution, leading to an opportunity right at the rim. Sexton against Jackson. Outside Sexton. Oh, and the release was before the buzzer, but it's off target. And the first half comes to an end. We've got a close game going here. Nuggets ahead. They lead by two. And we'll be right back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. See you in just a bit. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is right here. Say hey to the folks, Kenny. Hey, folks. Say hey to the yeah, folks, folks, Shaq. Hey, folks. Hey, let's get this party started. A pretty close game from the Nuggets throughout the first quarter. The period wrapped up with the teams on level ground and the score tied. In the second quarter, they put in the work to create a slight scoring advantage. Kenny, your thoughts on the Nuggets' first half? Well, I like what I'm seeing on the offensive end. They're keeping things simple, getting to their spots and executing. Nothing fancy. Kind of like Shaq Sue. And Shaq, how do you think the Jazz were playing? Give them credit for keeping the score this close while shooting just over 30%. In the backhanded way, kind of gives you confidence. Because you know if you bring your percentage up just a little bit, it'll be enough to get you in front. That's all for now. Say goodbye to the folks. Thanks goodbye, for folks. joining us. Third quarter, just about ready to begin. been fairly even so far. And here's Murray. Miles Bridges is out there with Laurie Markkinen. Then it's Jordan Clarkson. Then there's Colin Sexton. That's the group for Utah right now. Jokic shot is good. Jokic has got six points. Hey, even by NBA standards, Jokic is a mountain of a man. 6'11", they list him at 284. That's almost a seventh of a ton, folks. The Joker can handle whatever contact he embraces. Here's Sexton following the score by Denver. And he jams it home with authority. Now that's how you use the screen right there. And it leads to a thunderous finish. That was nice. And, you know, not enough help from the defense there to compensate. He gets a clean look, and that's exactly how you draw it up. From deep, hits a three-pointer. Caldwell Pope's got his first three points of the game. I think Caldwell Pope has done a nice job developing into a legit deep ball threat. Clarkson outside. With a step back. Can't get it to drop. With one on the clock. That shot off the mark. And we've reached the end of the third. Nuggets ahead, leading by five. And time for a short break. Stay right there. The fourth quarter is coming up next. We've reached the fourth quarter in what has been a very competitive game. Should be an exciting finish. Here's Dunn. And Denver, looking at who they've got to start the fourth. Porter Jr. and Gordon at the three and the four. Jackson out there with Contavious Caldwell-Pope. And it's Jokic in at the five spot. Now here's Bridges. Shot clock at five. Up and over Porter. Bridges misses. He expects to make every one of those. And we expect him to make them, too. Murray's checked in for Jackson. There's team foul. In for the Nuggets. Jamal Murray. Here's Murray. 
It's stolen by Don. And Utah calls time here. They're down by five. 34 seconds left in the fourth. All right, guys, what's your take? They don't want to waste time here. They can score fast enough. They can go back on D and try to get a stop instead of having to foul. break I listened to the jazz coach address his team he said in the huddle quote we are in this game keep fighting we win this one if we all play with 100% effort imploring his troops to stay aggressive guys all right Allie thanks once again well one thing you like there is the extra pass evidence that the game is starting to slow down for Dunn outstanding dribble drive and that replay was brought to you by Mobile One. And that's about as huge of a drive as we'll see. There's so much on the line, he couldn't be stopped. Now here's Murray. Pass to Jokic. Shot clock at six. Yeah! Hey! Out, and they just continue to attack, even the late in the game, the while they're up big. I don't think you want to get loose and sloppy or ease up, but it is time for them to start and using that clock. Time out time call of the Jazz. Yes. They're down by five. There's ten seconds left in the fourth quarter. Your thoughts, guys? And they're going to have to work fast coming out of the timeout. Okay? They're going to draw up a play here, I think, to get a shot right off of the inbounds pass and not waste too much time at all. A no-brainer choice here. I mean, given how incredible he's played, just decimated the defense. He did whatever he wanted to. No doubt in anybody's mind that this award was going to him. From deep three-point range. And it's Denver with a rebound. And so they foul intentionally. That's his first personal foul. Second team foul. Shooting for Denver. Nikola Jokic. Taking two shots. He hits the first one, and that increases the lead to six. Jokic has such a great basketball IQ, and his creativity is off the charts. He's capable of a triple-double just about every game. Here's Clarkson, outside Sexton. So it's Denver picking up the win. And they barely squeeze. 
nice south win here on the road. And B.A., the visiting team is always under some added pressure, but they made it work and got the win, whatever the margin may have been. Well, now we have some time to check in with Allie LaForce. Allie. Well, Jamal, I know you have a takeover mentality. Tonight you were focused on passing early. Can you talk about that? Yeah, easy way in, but play my game at the same time. I just want to make sure we ran the court well, get everybody else going because they've been they've been hooping. Uh, it's been a great team effort, and let's not just try to do what I can to get everybody going. Seeing your teammates score is always rewarding. Thanks so much, Jamal. Thanks, Allie. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Allie LaForce, and Grant Hill, this is Brian Anderson. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.